Mike Mignola is a living legend, such a unique style, and as an artist you just want to draw like him because it seems attainable. The sharp edges to the muscle, the hard shadows, clouds, grave sites, super specific. There's three ways you can draw like Mike. Let's skip using AI and actually being Mike Mignola. So I'll rank them on a scale from how easy it is. Number one, a very important step in an artist's learning path is tracing. But like the 10,000 hours rule, it only helps if you do it with a conscious mind. We've all watched 10,000 hours of movies, but are we all movie critics? No. But if you watch 10,000 hours of movies with a sharp mind that looks for patterns, you make notes, then you will. Tracing these days is really easy with Photoshop. Just download an image and trace the black lines with a brush of the same size, then fill in the blacks. When I was 14, I had traced an X-Men drawing and added my own Spider-Man on top of it and sent it to a fanzine, and they printed it. But when I saw it in print, I felt super bad and embarrassed. So, mm, it's a great learning tool, but I wouldn't pass this off as art. And since it's kind of like undressing and redressing the drawing, you can change it easily. Like change this Captain America into Daredevil or an X-Men. So yeah, it looks exactly like Mignola, because it is Mignola's drawing. So let's move on to the next step, copying. So you also go from the reference, but you rely on yourself for creating the shapes. That also makes it easier to slightly change the pose, but not too much, so the lighting stays the same. I found this image in a classic X-Men issue, and I thought it would be perfect to change into Spawn. Gotta love those majestic standing on a rock poses. Classic Frank Frazetta. Alrighty, gives a pretty good end result. And it's probably the best way to learn how to draw. So let's go to the final way, which is using multiple reference images to merge together. This is also what I was doing in my 100 artist challenge this summer. You can't just cut and paste parts together, especially with someone like Mignola, because the angle of the shadows need to be the same in each body part. So it's about looking at the style and understanding why it's like that. Like in his legs. This is the typical underlying shape, and imagining it in a three-dimensional way would drop the shadow like this. If you would just think, oh, it's a sharp oval and the bottom is black with some parts cut out of it, it wouldn't work. Also the pose, you're not just copying a specific pose, but looking what the common thread is. So in this Gambit case, straight lines in the upper body and bent legs with thin ankles and long feet. Also looking at the way Mignola would draw a long face and how he drops the shadows. And of course that thick striped hatching is a must.
And let's add an adversary. Snicked! Okay, pretty fun. But let's do it again, starting from memory first. So when I think of a Mignola cover, I have this in mind. An old-timey Superman looking right in the camera. And in my mind, I was actually blending these together. Okay, got the idea. So now let's pull up the actual images for some closer studying. A lot of the pros started in a style that was very similar to another artist, like a young Joe Quesada. He was obviously very inspired by Mignola in the beginning, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He didn't trace, he didn't copy, but the type of anatomy he used was exactly like Mignola. And that's fine by me. There's room in this world for Mark Silvestri and Michael Turner. There's room for Jack Kirby and Eric Larson. Room for Arthur Adams and Joe Mad. Bill Sienkiewicz and Kyle Baker. So I say, let's get inspired. And finished. The degree of how much it looks like Mignola in these is connected to how hard it was. So tracing and copying looks the most accurate, obviously. The others a bit less, but fun was had and lessons were learned. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Hope you give it a try yourself and let me know how it goes.